Hey, Facebook fans, Pastor Sullivan here answering your questions with ATP Ask the Pastor. Today we have a calisthenics question. Dear Pastor, why do we stand up and sit down when we do in church? I've also noticed that at times the pastor faces the congregation during the service, while at other times he faces the altar. Can you explain? Sure. Uh, first thing, with, with posture, with uh, standing up, sitting down, uh, it all has to do with focus and who's speaking. So we sit down whenever we are listening, whenever we're supposed to be attentive to what we're either hearing or singing. We'll come back to that. Uh, but that's why we sit. We sit to pay attention. So we sit during the readings. We sit during the sermon. Uh, we sit during the hymns uh, because hymns are meant primarily to teach the faith. Uh, they also praise God, but they are primarily to teach the faith. Uh, standing, we stand then out of reverence. Uh, and out of respect, respect is too little of a word, out of honor. Uh, when someone comes to your house or walks into your office, what do you do? You rise to greet them. And so there are times in the divine service when we rise to offer our praises to God, uh, when we rise to hear his word. So, for instance, we sit traditionally during the Old Testament and during the epistle lesson. However, then when the very words of Jesus are read in the gospel, then we rise out of reverence, out of honor for the words of Christ. Uh, there is one more liturgical posture, and that is kneeling. We don't have kneelers at Holy Cross. However, uh, we do kneel at the communion rail for those who are able. And again, kneeling then is a sign of reverence and humility. Uh, you can, if you're able to do it and able to get back up afterwards, kneel on the ground during the confession of sins. Uh, that's one thing I try to do is kneel up at the altar during that, as again, as, as a symbol of... It's an outward symbol of what we're doing inwardly as far as confessing our sins and being humble and contrite before God. Um, an, another uh, posture that we do often is the folding of hands um, and the bowing of heads. Now, I, I have small children, so I understand why we do this. Uh, think about with children, uh, hands are going everywhere, eyes are darting to wherever anything is moving. And so the folding of hands however you want to do that, the bowing of the head, the closing of the eyes, this is all to focus uh, you as a worshiper on receiving God's word that he gives to you and then responding back appropriately in prayer, with praise, and with thanksgiving. So those are the postures of worship. Now, the second part of the question was about uh, the times when the pastor faces the congregation and then when he turns around and faces the altar. Uh, whenever he faces the congregation, this is called um, this is called the sacramental position because he is facing the congregation, speaking to the congregation on behalf of God. So the Lord is speaking through His Word to the congregation. Pastor is God's representative, the voice of Christ speaking to that. So that's why the pastor faces the congregation for the sermon, for the readings, uh, for the confession, for the absolution. Uh, those sorts of things. However, whenever the pastor faces the altar, that's called uh, the sacrificial position, and the pastor is, uh, the, the representation switches, and the pastor is approaching the altar speaking to God on behalf of the people. So that's when we're offering up our praise uh, and prayers such as the collect of the day, the prayer of the church, parts of the liturgy that are praise. Uh, so whichever direction the pastor is speaking, that's who's talking, so to speak. When we face the altar, usually we're talking to God. And when the pastor faces the congregation, God is speaking to you. Now, that's kind of an elementary distinction, but it helps us to keep track of what's going on. Great question, though. I'm glad you asked because everything we do in the worship service does have a meaning to it. Uh, there's nothing in there that's willy-nilly. There's nothing in there that's done just for the sake of doing something. Everything in worship, everything has a purpose. And the purpose is to teach Christ, to teach reverence, to teach humility, uh, to teach the fear of God, uh, and to teach us how to be and how to speak and how to act, uh, even down with our little fidgety movements, when we are in God's presence, both with his word uh, and his presence in the Holy Sacrament. Great question. Keep them coming. Send them to this address. Where is it? Right here. ATP 
holycross at gmail.com and we'll answer them when we get them. Thanks a lot.